There's a shark around here. No, there it is. It's coming back towards Trevor. Glad I was not in the canoe. It was pretty big. It was huge. Welcome to another adventure with the Sydney Raid Sailing Group. Dinghy cruising and camp cruising on inland waterways around Sydney in Australia. So this is Trevor's new Pathfinder. It's bloody luxury, mate. <laughs> a lot more rates, Paul, a lot more rates. Yeah, but just think of the comfort as you're sleeping in there when it's pouring with rain and you're out of it. It, it looks quite heavy. It's 240 kilos apparently thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. So we're up at Lake Macquarie, which is about three hours north from Sydney. We've got a great collection of boats, all shapes and sizes. This is Chris in his Michael Storer Combi canoe. Goes very well. We're off on the water. Sorry, I was just checking. Yeah. Chris was getting quite close below me. Um, yeah, we're off on the water. We've got five boats today and I think there's a few more coming tomorrow. It's about a four or five knot breeze at the moment. It's quite nice. We've got a couple of new boats. Uh, Mark with his trimaran and Trevor with his John Wellsford Pathfinder, which is new. So that should be his first sail, so that should be good. There's Steve up ahead with his uh, Bay Raider. And over there is Rick in his Drascom longboat. So it's a bit cloudy, but uh, it's quite warm. Probably 24 degrees today. Uh, yeah, nice gentle breeze. Not too strong. Nobody on the water apart from us. It is a Friday. I've got a bit of a trivia question for you. Why is starboard starboard and port port on a boat? I'll give you the answer later. Good little sail. I think the wind's picked up a bit now. It's probably about, uh, I don't know, eight knots, maybe a bit more. Um, we're heading over to the back of Wanji Wanji. Trevor's got his dad crewing and he's gonna drop his dad off at Wanji Wanji. They live up around here. So his pathfinder's going really well and he's only got the main up. It's lovely sailing though. So Rick, did you see something in the water? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, we were, Steve and I were leading the fleet and um, saw a couple of fins, one at the back, one at the front, with about 10 foot in between. Oh my God. And uh, it cruised past and then turned and sailed at the boat and then uh, headed towards you, Paul. I it didn't see it. Underwater as it, as oh. it so what do you reckon it was, a bull shark or something? Well, I, bull shark. That's, so that, that's my first shark sighting up here and I didn't see it. Bugger. <laughs> we were close, like Dad and I were probably within 20 feet of it I suppose. Yeah. And um, I reckon it might have been a bull shark, but I think it might have been a hammerhead because they had a, sort of a, a curvy a dorsal fin. Whereas I, I think the bull sharks remind me of a little great white, how they got a sort of straight back on their fin, I don't know. Yeah, yeah a little, uh, and it like a v, yeah, little v at the back, v of, the back of it. it. Yes, and it, it, it was longer it. than your boat, wasn't it? Oh, it was pretty big, it was huge. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it actually was pretty big. <laughs> I'm glad I was not in the canoe. <laughs> Did you see it, Chris? I didn't see it. Oh, he did just as well. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't get to see the shark. Maybe it's still down there. We've got to go past where it was. Definitely up to, I'd say, 12 knots now. 
I've really got too much sail up, but uh, we're going to run all the way back when I get around to uh, Paul Bar, so it should be all right. I can always drop the main. It's a bit tricky reefing when it's this strong, but of course that's when you need to reef when it's too strong. So we're behind Paul Bar Island now, so we're just out of the wind for a brief moment. Um, Chris and his uh, combi canoe took a lot of water over the side, so he's had to bail it all out, but now he's up and he's going. He didn't go right over, but I think he came pretty close. There were a few big gusts. I'm keeping my eyes open for sharks. We're just going past Summerland at the moment, Summerland Point, and it was roughly in this area where the shark was this morning. So uh, we're all keeping an eye out for a large shark. Should be quite exciting, I've never seen a shark in the wild. So this is Mark and uh, his rather large dinghy. <laughs> but it has a lot of comfort that we don't have. And the wet weather couldn't hold out any longer. It started to rain just as we got to Birdcage Point where we were staying the night. So Trevor's bought a John Wellsford Pathfinder and it, as you well know Trevor has a Taminori. So Trev, why did you go bigger? To my right here behind me? <laughs> it's purely and simply for the cabin. So like um, I was frustrated with the Taminori, a great little boat, awesome for sailing, but I was always sleeping on the land, which was fine because I don't get seasick or anything, but sometimes you just don't have that yeah. ability. Like sometimes there's no trees, sometimes there's too many yeah, yeah. bushes and I can sleep in here. Yeah, if you're on a mooring. On a mooring, that's right. It, so, um, you know. And, and really it's peer group pressure. I wanted to be part of the team and do You're always <laughs> part of the team, Trev. You're always part of the team. The, do, do, the, uh, do the camping in the cabin thing, even though technically probably you and I are both probably breaching the rules because it does have a half cabin. Yes, that's true. There are there are a few naysayers out there that uh, point nope. out that dinghies don't have cabins. And as I, as I found out, yours is a soft top. Mine's a hard top, so yes. that's even worse. Yeah, separate Oh, we had a fantastic night here at Birdcage Point, or it's also known as the Duck Pond. I'm just going to get tow out with Trev because it's about late 30 in the morning. We've got to try and get back to Summerland Point to meet the other guys. There's not much wind at the moment, but hopefully they'll be a bit more further out. So yeah, good night. Nice clear sky this morning. Um, hopefully it'll be a nice day's sail. We've turned the outboard off and uh, we thought there was a little bit of wind out here. It's open to debate. I think uh, not even one knot, but hopefully we'll get a little more. It's about uh, quarter past nine. I said I'd meet everybody else at Summerland Point at 10. And yeah, if this doesn't pick up, we're gonna have to motor again because we'll never get there. It's only around this next headland, but it's still quite a way. And the other thing too is when there's no breeze, God, it's twice as hot. It's 10 bars nine in the morning and it's quite hot. starboard on the right hand side and port on the left. Well a long time ago a lot of sailors were right-handed, well most sailors were right-handed 
So they put the steering mechanism, which was an oar or a lee board, on the right hand side. And it was called the steer board. So that became starboard. And because when you went into port you had to moor, you couldn't moor on the side that had your steerage gear. So that side became port. So it became port and starboard. That all changed in the 1300s when the Italians invented the centre rudder, the centre mounted rudder. And everybody followed suit, as you do. Very stylish, the Italians. Hello! That's marked paradox. I can't remember whether I've told you before, but I've started crewing on the Doykin, or the Little Dove, which is a 16th century replica of uh, a square rigged ship. In fact, it was the first ship to discover Australia 164 years before Captain Cook. And the replica of it is at the Maritime Museum in Sydney. Uh, and you can come out and go for a sail and experience what it was like to be a sailor back in those days. Pretty basic, let me tell you. But more importantly, it survives on volunteers sailing. So if you want to be a volunteer crew in the Doykin, just uh, contact the Sydney Maritime Museum. They're always looking for volunteers. And it's great fun, trust me. So as they say on Handmaid's Tale, blessed day, or is it glorious day? Glorious day, blessed day. Just going around Wanji Wanji Point, and as you can see, Saturday is race day on Lake Macquarie. There's a lot of boats out. But it's not surprising, so the weather is absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to stop for lunch. This is Wanji Wanji Caravan Park up ahead. So how are you, John? Good to meet you. Good to meet you too, Paul. Yeah. I've heard the legend, oh. now I've seen it. I'm, I'm not a legend. <laughs> I think you've got a very fast boat there. I, I tend to look after the rear of the fleet, <laughs> you know? That's okay. <laughs> I had no idea where I was going, so I was just doing zigzags. So where are you from? Musclebrook. The lovely wife, and it's yes. her anniversary today. Oh, and she wanted to go sailing? Yeah. Oh, the perfect wife. <laughs> So lunch stop at uh, Wanji Wanji Caravan Park. Very nice spot. Here comes Steve. So this is the inside of Mark's Paradox. So Mark, what's your new addition to the Paradox? I have a Scotch bar. That's there's, just decadence. There, there's a selection, I think, of six different scotches, and uh, there's a little glass that all sits there just under the window. So, so, so it's true to say dinghy cruising's not always hardcore? No, definitely not. Definitely not. We don't have to be barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the forehead hand down here. It is. Tactician, navigator. Yeah. Boss. <laughs> uh, Georgie. Georgie. Hello, Georgie. She gets extremely upset if I leave her behind. Do you like sailing, Georgie? <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> Georgie, do you like sailing? You do. Oh, you talk. Yeah. So we're back on the water again. That was a very nice lunch stop at Wanji Wanji Caravan Park. Been there a few times, but it's uh, really nice, protected, and you can see all the action happening on the water. Highly recommend it. And if you want to go camping there, you can. Very nice spot. And now we're going for a bit of a sail this afternoon around the lake, and then end up on the uh, west side of Wanji uh, Point Wollstonecraft. That's right. As you can see, there's a lot of people sailing, taking advantage of what a glorious day it is. It's probably 
five or six knots now. I think it was a little stronger before lunch, but... Uh, what a beautiful, glorious afternoon. That's John in his Walla. 5.4. Beautiful day. Absolutely magic. See that splashing around? That's a shark. Just in front of Steve, breaking the water there. Right in the middle of frame. See that? See the speed it's going? Well, this might sound strange, but um, that's just made my day, seeing a shark. They moved so fast, I couldn't believe it. It was only, only on the surface for 15 seconds or something, just scooting around after fish and then disappeared. Um, I was planning on going for a swim because it's quite hot. I might just hold off on the swim now, I think. Uh, where there's one, there's probably others. Uh, we're just going around the end of Point Wollstonecraft. It's about 4.30. Uh, you can tell there is a storm brewing. Hopefully it won't be tonight though. Uh, it's got a bit cloudy, which is good because it was getting very hot. So here we are on the west side of uh, Point Wollstonecroft. So Trev, what do you got for dinner? I have uh, cauliflower and pea dal. Yes. Which I got from RTM. Not that I'm plugging RTM, but it's yeah. it first time, so De I'll let you know what it's like. Dehydrated meal. And what's that one? The campus pantry. Okay. It's one of those ones where you just add water, wait for some time, and shake it, every, mix it every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about your beautiful brass portholes. Is it portholes or portals? Well, 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 it could be portals, abbreviated from portholes, I don't but know. portals. So apparently, uh, the guy bought the boat off, um, which which was uh, Colin Robinson. He said that um, a fishing boat sank in Newcastle, a, a boat of some description that uh, crashed into the jetty and sank. Someone salvaged it for parts and pulled it apart, and these two portals came off that boat, and they're over 100 years old. Wow! And one, one's got scratches or something, hasn't it? Come around this side, Paul. It's, yeah. it's on the uh, on the starboard side, <laughs> and it's scratched because that's where it... that's where it hit the wharf. Yeah, Gee. that's where it sank. So not that I don't know if it's good or bad luck, but I'm taking it as good luck. You can't sink twice. Yeah, I can see where it's actually uh... collided. Yeah, it's taking a fair impact, hasn't it? Wow. I was very impressed with your Pathfinder today. You just took off and you're so, it's so manoeuvrable, mm. you know? I mean, you have to be impressed, don't you? Oh, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm loving it. It's like, um, whether it's light winds, even in the strong winds, I found it really stable. Like, and... Yeah? Yeah, it was fine. Like, strong winds, I had, I tried all different configurations and I thought it was fantastic. And it's called Posh. What, what does that mean? The word posh apparently is a maritime term from way back in the old days of England when they would go to the Mediterranean for holidays. If you had enough money, you could have the best seats on the way to the Mediterranean, which was the port side. And then when they turned around to come home, they would swap you to the starboard side. So it's called port out starboard home. It would be written on the ticket if you could afford it. And it was for posh people. And that's how posh came about and it stuck. Wow, that is fascinating. So we haven't asked for permission to come near the boat. You're, you're scaring... Hey! You're scaring the audience. Georgie! Hey! Georgie! Georgie! 
Shooting. Hey, come on. Well, not... I do like your lookout. It's very efficient. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So what's the meal like? Um, it is beautiful. Really nice. So it's a cauliflower and pea dal. Yeah. It's like baby poo, but it tastes fantastic. Very good. Very good. And what five-star dining have you got, Phil? Oh, I've got the same. So Snap. I'm having one of those. Yes. yes, exactly what I'm going to have. And I'm going to chop up some uh, hot salami and put in there. Oh, I'm not doing that bit though. <laughs> but I've got some vegetarian bites. Okay. Um, I don't know what's in them, but I added them half of the packet last night to something to the soup, which is really good. I'm going to use the rest tonight. So Chris, what are you going to have tonight? I am very slack tonight. I'm having a can of Irish, hearty Irish stew. Oh! But I do have some fresh vegetables oh, that's, to put with it. So that is very to good. To make it into a proper meal. You've got to have fresh vegetables. Yes. Yeah. Fresh from my garden, picked oh. the day before I left. Now tell me about, you, you were lambing, you said recently. Yes, so we had, we've, we've only got 25 acres, so it's a very little farm, but we had 62 lambs. 62 yes, lambs! So it was... Not all planned. We acquired some more pregnant sheep halfway through the, the season. And do they give birth in the middle of the night? Or? Uh, some in the middle of the night. It was surprisingly <laughs> easy this year. Last year we had lots of problems, but most of them popped out quite happily. Oh, good. Only a few needed to be helped this time. Yeah, and what was your sail like today? That sail was great. Yeah? Not too much wind. I had a nice paddle this morning when it was... You paddled um, a long way. I found, yeah, so I found I could do five kilometres an hour, for, and it was... Probably almost an hour to mm. a, a bit of a sail in a gentle yeah, breeze. Yeah. I didn't fall over today. Yeah, you're a bit drier today. That's always good. Yes. So this is your sleeping arrangement, Chris. It's, it's a, a Hennessy, isn't it? Hennessy yes. hammock? Yes. They're American, aren't they? So I think well. Hennessy's. So I've spent two nights in it so far and I'm quite impressed. I'm going to yeah, keep yeah. using it. And it's very easy to put up. It doesn't matter what's underneath. Has it? Has it got a, uh, a slip to put a back cover in? You know, no, the, the... I've got a foam pad that I tie inside, but they do sell a, yeah. like a second skin to go underneath with, yeah. a, with a bubble wrap. Yeah. A sort of foil bubble wrap thing inside that I think I'm going to ask for a Christmas present. I think we're lucky too, aren't we, with the climate in Australia? Because people, you know, yeah. camp in Canada and the States and stuff, yeah. And, yeah freeze to death if you don't keep your back warm. I'll, I'll stay home if it gets that cold. <laughs> <laughs> So tonight I'm going to have a creamy bacon carbonara continental sauce. I think that's what Phil's having as well. And I'm going to add the rest of my yummy pumpkin and spinach vegetarian bites. Pumpkin, chickpeas, sweet potato, canola oil, bison flour, whatever that is, spinach, potato starch, onion, garlic, salt, yeast extract, parsley, curry powder, vegetable gum, pepper and oregano. The dodgy things are the salt, but they add salt to just about everything these days. Anyway, I might have these at home. They taste very good. So that's my new pot holder that I made. So this bit is actually um, cut out, so it sits around the knob on the top, and it holds the pot in place because the lid grips the pan, so it won't move. Because when boats go past, I have lost a dinner once upon a time all over the floor. There's a big storm coming. Well, good morning. Had a really good night's sleep last night. The wind swung around a little bit. Uh, but it didn't come up and we didn't really get a big storm. I think we missed the edge of it. And uh, yeah, it's very peaceful this morning. It's probably only about six or seven o'clock, I think. Put too much water in it. Coffee. Mm. 
nice. So we're lucky here because I've just here this is sort of rock drop off. Um, it's covered in weeds, so it's not too sharp. But I can pull in with the uh, anchor buddy, step off, and then pull out again. So that's good. So how'd you sleep, all right? Not too bad. Not yeah? too bad at all. Yeah, it was pretty good for me as well. Yeah. So this is your Bay Raider 17. Yeah, yeah, built yeah. by Denman Marine. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful boat. Thank you. And really fast. Almost as fast as Kate Louise. Oh, I don't think so. I think it's a lot faster. No. You, but you but were, don't tell Derek. You were catching me up. I, you don't know I was watching you. The gap was closing. No, I, no. I don't, so my, mine's a pretty old design, but the new ones are going to be a bit faster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're all beautiful boats. Doesn't yeah. matter whether it's fast or slow, just as long as you're out in the water enjoying That's right. It. Absolutely. There's heaps of room and you put your slats across for the bed. Yeah, the slats go across nicely and uh, yeah. just roll out the sleeping bag. It's yeah. Very, com very comfortable. So it's got a bimini sort of thing and then you've got a... Got a little extension. Yeah. Did you add that? Was that... Yeah, no, I added that. Just to yeah. make it a little more, bit more spacious. So what are those flaps down there under the uh, outboard for? Uh, they just to maintain the hull shape when the outboard's up. What a great idea. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the motor's touching the bottom at the moment, so. Yeah. yeah. Wow, and when you're sailing, it maintains the hull shape. You can see the plug. So that's the water ballast in there. Yeah. So it's a bit odd partially sinking your boat, isn't it, really? Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Took a bit to get used to. <laughs> So I'm just going to have some porridge with uh, mandarins. Porridge and mandarins for breakfast. See you Steve, see you on the next one. Safe travels. Uh, Chris is heading back to Canberra. He's not paddling the whole way though, just in case you thought he might be. I'll see you out there. Uh, we had a fantastic night just there at the uh, western side of Point Wollstonecraft. Just gonna go for a bit of a potter of a sail. It's not a lot of wind yet. It normally doesn't come up till 10 or 11. Um, and we'll probably head back to Summerland Point Boat Ramp around midday so we can get home. Trevor's got a three hour drive to Port Macquarie. I've probably got a, a one and a half hour drive back to uh, Hornsby. And Phil's staying up here for a few extra days. He comes from Foster. He's a lucky man. Got it. Another shark. Just between those two boats in the middle of frame now, you can see the fin of a shark. It's only just above the water. You see it moving? It's gone under the water. Oh no, there it is, it's coming back towards Trevor. It, between the two middle boats there, you can see a little black thing in the middle of frame. It's going towards Trevor. That's the fin of a shark. There's definitely a storm brewing. I'd like to say I know what I'm doing, but that wouldn't be the case. Ahoy, Captain. <laughs> There's a shark around here somewhere. <laughs> I won't put you in the water then. <laughs> we just saw it. Yeah, it was only just above the water though. So we're taking evasive action, trying to avoid the storm. It has just started raining though. So it might be a bit of a wet pack up. Back 
thank you very much for watching Sailing Cape Louise and I'll see you on the water somewhere next time. Storm's getting closer.